Good morning. In this mission, we will practice the startup procedure for the A10C. There's a lot to cover, so feel free to take a break by pressing the pause key at any point. It will be important for you to follow my instructions to the letter. Do not jump ahead and start mashing buttons and throwing switches. I will guide you toward the desired controls with highlights and by referring to the front dash and left and right consoles. You can pan around the cockpit using your view control commands to locate the switches. If you find it hard to hear my instructions over the background noise, exit the mission and turn down the world and in cockpit sound sliders to about 50% in the options menu. As described in the flight manual, a pre-flight check is normally performed prior to startup to ensure the aircraft is configured properly. However, for the purposes of this lesson, we'll begin the startup sequence with the aircraft's initial configuration set as it would be at the start of all missions. The startup procedure will consist of initiating electrical power, starting the APU, followed by the left and right engines, and finally powering up and preparing all essential avionics. Press the spacebar key when you are ready to begin. First, set the battery switch on the electrical panel on the right side console to power. This will provide power to the DC buses and the APU. Follow the highlight at the bottom right corner of the screen to locate the switch. Good. Now set the inverter switch on the same panel to standby. This will allow AC power to be supplied to numerous aircraft instruments. It will also provide power to the engine igniters. With electrical power now running, we can take a moment to test the caution and warning systems to make sure that we will receive warnings in case something goes wrong in the startup. To do this, press and hold the left test button on the auxiliary lighting panel on the left console. Take a look around the cockpit while you hold down the button to make sure that all of the caution lights are functional and you can hear an audible warning tone. Everything looks good. Now let's test the fuel indicator to make sure it's functional and accurate. The fuel indicator is located on the right side of the front dash. When tested, the two needles should point to 3,000 pounds, and the digital tonalizer readout should be around 6,000 pounds. On the oxygen regulator panel, set the supply switch to on, and check for our oxygen flow to be indicated in the flow window. Press the oxy in test oxygen indicator test button to test the oxygen remaining indicator. Watch the oxy low caution light on the caution lights panel to turn on when the indication falls below 0.5 liters. We also need to power the radios to communicate with ATC and mission assets. Set the VHF AM frequency mode dial to TR, transceiver. Now repeat the process for the VHF FM radio. Set the UHF radio function down to main to power the UHF radio. We are now ready to begin the engine start sequence, but let's first close the canopy to minimize the noise. Right click and hold the canopy control switch to lower the canopy or press left control plus C on the keyboard. Starting the engines will take several minutes and require a few steps. First, we need to provide power to the boost pumps of the left and right wing tanks and left and right fuselage tanks. You will find the four switches on the fuel system control panel toward the top of the left console. Set all four switches to the up position. Before starting the engines, we need to start the auxiliary power unit, APU, which will generate bleed air used to start the main engines. As you start the APU, be ready to monitor the APU exhaust gas temperature, EGT, and RPM gauges on the engine monitoring instrument's EMI panel located on the bottom right of the front dash. Go ahead and set the APU start switch to start. Now let's return to the electrical panel and set the APU generator switch to the power position. This will allow the APU generator to power the aircraft and relieve the battery drain. However, the battery needs to remain on as a backup electrical source. While on the electrical panel and in preparation of the engine start sequence, let's also set the left and right AC generators up to power. Once the engines are started, they will begin to turn the AC generators. 
generators and take over from the APU to provide electrical power. Okay, time to crank up the left engine. This is a very simple process initiated simply by moving the left throttle from off to idle or pressing the right alt plus home keys. This will automatically start fuel flow, use bleed air from the APU to turn the fans, and then ignite the fuel in the combustion chamber. As the engine spools up, scan the engine monitoring instruments panel to watch the engine interstage turbine temperature, ITT, engine core speed, fan speed, and fuel flow gauges. Watch for the core fan RPM to stabilize around 60% when idling on the ground. You will also notice the left hydraulic system's pressure begin to build. This will normalize between 2,800 and 3,350 PSI. Once the left engine is running normal and stable, press the spacebar key to proceed. We'll now repeat the process for the right engine. Once again, the engine is started by moving the throttle from off to idle, or in this case, pressing the right control plus hold key. Okay, now we'll power up the control display unit, CDU, and the embedded GPS INS AV systems. This will begin the automated built-in test, BIM, and alignment processes for the navigation system, which you can monitor on the CDU display on the right console. Uncase the standby.